So welcome. I'm Sam from Simplicity. And uh, Simon, if you'd like to wave there, because there's a whole crew, your crew there is Simon from First Credit. And welcome. We're going to have a chat to you about the announcement that we made uh, last week about our strategic friendship. And then uh, really take um, any questions that you have. So I guess what, what we'll do is we'll spend about um, 10 minutes. Uh, Simon will talk 10 minutes about First Credit. I'll talk about Simplicity because we know that there will be members from either organization that may not know about the other. And then uh, we'll get on to Simon and I having a conversation about why we agree to the strategic friendship and what we think it means for our members and for the future financial services in New Zealand. And then we'll take some questions. So I'm going to pass over to you, Simon. Uh, right. and your team and just basically talk about First Credit Union just for, for about 10 minutes here. Yeah, no worries. So um, uh, thanks, Sam, for this opportunity and thanks, everyone, for joining. So First Credit Union, we've been around nearly 70 years now. Uh, we've got close to 60,000 members and our um, way that we operate is we're a cooperative financial mutual. So that means that um, those members that uh, borrow from us, bank with us, deposit with us or whatever, uh, are the owners of our credit union. So um, we provide a whole suite of services. So we've got, uh, we're basically uh, a mini bank in the sense of our product suite is um, everything you'd expect, except we don't offer a credit card. So uh, we've got great loan products, um, some mortgage products, savings products, all the usual uh, bits and pieces. And the great thing is, um, our reason for being is that we give deposit rate, interests, uh, interest rates and uh, lending rates because it's membership owned. So the value of um, being a member of something is, is you get benefits. And that is the number one benefit um, uh, is you get lower uh, interest rates. So as I say, we've been going nearly 70 years. Um, recently, we've taken over some other credit unions um, Steel Sands Credit Union up in Auckland. Uh, we're about to take over on the 1st of October uh, Fisher and Paykel Employees Credit Union. Uh, they'll join us on the 1st of October. And so over the last few years, we've done a few of those, which means now we have um, uh, a presence in New Zealand from down in Lawnville and Invercargill through to Whangarei um, with our 14 branches um, throughout New Zealand. So that means that um, if you don't want to use our internet or mobile banking products, you can come into a branch uh, close to where you live and still see real people. In Auckland, uh, in the next month or so, our Manukau and Avondale branches will be merging into what we're calling a super branch in Penrose. <clears throat> and so for the first time in New Zealand, but this uh, often happens overseas with credit unions, we'll be sharing a, a really um, nice, bright, brand new branch with um, a, a, another credit union, Auckland Credit Union, Auckland, um, which is uh, their name. So uh, there's there's lots happening. Um, we're really uh, happy over the period of the last, I don't know how long we've been talking, Sam, a couple of years. Mm. Um, and, oh, and I don't want to get onto the values of alignment at the moment too much, but clearly what Sam and I saw is that our values clearly align. We are both um, very ethical in how we operate and what we do. We don't have shareholders. Um, in a way, simplicity I consider to be in all but name sort of a cooperative by default, um, just like us. So uh, with these great synergies we can do together and we look forward to doing that. Hmm. Awesome. And we've got, oh, just to explain, we've got 110, about 110 staff um, across the country. Um, we've got a very big call center over in Tauranga to take um, all the members' phone calls. And uh, as I alluded to before, we've got a great internet banking, mobile banking applications. So, you know, we, we're um, pretty much up there. We've got some great stuff happening in the next couple of months um, with a master with MasterCard uh, debit card. Um, we're very much a fast follower of the IT. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're doing pretty well. Fantastic. Thanks, Simon. That's awesome. Well, I'll just spend a few minutes talking about Simplicity for those of you who are unaware of us and just give, and for those who are members of Simplicity, just a few updates on things as well that you might be interested in. And then we'll get on to basically talking about our strategic friendship. So I'm just going to share the screen here. Um, so let me just play that. Oh, excuse me. Just going to move that thing out. Right. Can you see that, team? It, Simon, yeah, you can see that. Great. Okay. 
So simplicity, we fundamentally call ourselves a dignity company. And what we mean by that is that we want people to have dignity in retirement and the dignity of owning their own home if they want to. And um, so we set ourselves up to say, okay, well, that's what our aim is. That's why we are around. And um, how we will achieve that is by giving people more choice. So a life with choices is a life with dignity. And you know, what do you do to do that? Well, you give people money, you make them wealthier. So more money gives you more choices in life and more choices in life gives you, you know, dignity in life. The other way of putting that, of course, is that poverty sucks. And so we set ourselves up as a... Um, just do this as a non-profit business uh we started seven years ago so we're not nearly as old as first credit but we're old enough now to have sort of probably lost our training wheels and um we are actually owned by the simplicity foundation and we give 15 percent of our fees to them and what we do is kiwisaver funds investment funds we do first home loans so i think the only product in which there's an overlap between ourselves and first credit is in mortgages and then we also are private equity investors. That means we take stakes in family-owned businesses in New Zealand. And then we're also becoming a, a very large um, uh, builder of homes for rent, starting out in Auckland and then you know going further south in the country. So um, we have 143,000 members now, um, rising at about 50 a day or so on. We save about $381 on average per member, and that is because our fees are about a third uh, in many cases of our competitors, and that is because we're a nonprofit. We don't have you know, hungry shareholders to feed. We're very much like first credit in that regard, very much a cooperative, and when we get scale, we lower our fees. So we've lowered our fees six times in seven years, and we'll just carry on doing that as we get scale. Um, that 15% of fees to charity has meant that we've given away about $6.4 million to charity right now. And that increases at about uh, $7,500 a day, something like that. So the more we grow, once again, the more we can give to charity. And we manage about almost $5.2 billion of, uh, of funds under management, which is, um, I think, we're the fastest growing uh, um, asset manager, you know, um, for a very long time in New Zealand, maybe ever. But anyway, after seven years, that's a good a good amount. Um, our funds, as you can see, there are, are pretty typical for um, uh, uh, KiwiSaver and investment funds. So we have high growth funds. So that invests in in you know lots of things which are focused on growth. So that's shares, um, um, some of our property fund, our Simplicity Living build to rent and so on. Then we have growth, which has a little bit more of a mixture, a little bit more fixed income. Balance, which is right in the middle, and that's also our default fund that has 50% growth assets, 50% income assets. Then our conservative one, which is mostly in income assets, and then defensive, which is almost entirely in income assets and is designed for people who want to preserve, preserve their capital. Um, we also do the uh, single sector funds as well, just so you're aware. We do New Zealand share and New Zealand bond funds. So um, top 35 uh, companies on the share exchange, uh, stock exchange, sorry. And then we have a lot of um, investment grade and government grade bonds in our New Zealand bond fund. And then we do global shares. One of them is hedged to the New Zealand dollar. The other isn't. They tend to be quite specialized. And then our hedge global bond fund. So you can have a fixed interest exposure all around the world, hedge back to New Zealand dollars. Um, we are really, really focused on fees. As you can see, this is from Sorted. You can see our growth fund, balanced fund, and conservative fund. You can see what a lifetime fee would be there that Sorted estimate uh, our fees versus what they that they would they would uh, estimate. So, for example, there's someone who's uh, 18 years old. They earn forty-seven thousand dollars a year. They retire at 65, and they get three percent into their KiwiSaver and three percent from their employer. So that's a pretty pretty standard situation uh, for someone on the average salary. As you can see, our fees are $17,000 over your lifetime, but the average uh, fee in a growth fund would be $61,000. So you're saving a lot. If it's a balanced fee, the average the industry charges 42,000, we would charge more like 14,000. In the conservative fund, 33,000, we would charge more like 12,000. So really significantly lower fees, which we think will make a difference to people uh, in retirement. Obviously, that depends on the type of fund you're in, how the market goes up and down and so on. But this is a like for like illustrative um, comparison from sorted. So, you know, you can you can you can trust them. And so that's us. Um, we've uh, I've, we've got it there uh, all on the same slide there, but I'll just get out of this now and we'll go back to um, Simon, you and I. There you go. So I guess, Simon, could you just I mean, you alluded this to this 
uh, just the end of your presentation there. How do you feel about the natural alignment of simplicity and first credit and, and why why did the idea appeal to you? Well, as I said, um, Sam, the whole you know first credit union and simplicity is all about ethics, lack of a shareholder <laughs> to um, demand more and more returns to um, them and out of the out of the members' accounts as it were. So that it, it just works beautifully with our, you know, with our products, your products, and having the same outlook on life, which is all about actually saving people money going forward. Yeah. And I think it's kind of cool too, isn't it? That if you think about, we hardly overlap, there's only mortgages. And in many cases, we're special, you know, we want first home mortgages as well. Yours is a relatively small uh, mortgage book, but you're obviously very big in the other things you do. And from Simplicity's point of view, we don't want to be doing anything that someone else is doing really well on the market, right? So we don't want to be, we don't want to have all of those um, banking facilities that you already have. We wouldn't want to do a debit card if you're already going to offer one. We certainly wouldn't want to be doing personal loans if there's someone yeah. like you who with a big heart is doing it. So that's really nice. Um, and our, our, our personal loan is really our forte. Yeah. So we're quite happy to do personal loans, you know, small ones for a few hundred dollars right up to thousands and thousands of dollars. And, um, you know, we've probably got the best personal loan out there in the market. We don't do any fees. We charge yeah. um, <clears throat> relatively very low interest rates. And what we also want to do too, and, you know, we can have a talk about the triple CFA and the effect that's had on us. But um, part of our reason for being is also um, character lending, knowing that, you know, if you've been a member and, uh, you know, your pay comes in and and we know who you are and all that sort of stuff, then we're prepared to, to look at that and say, actually, um, we'll also do some personal lending. And sometimes in the past that hasn't fitted into the boxes, but we've done it and it's served us very well. So mm -hmm. to be able to continue to do that in the future is... Um, are really important to us. You're not talking about this radical idea of taking a human being into consideration here, Simon, are you? Yep. You're not... That's all... yep. And we've always done that, um, yeah. you know, from day one. And, and you know, um, and that's vitally important because it's actually about dignity. And it's about mm. actually saying, you know, you can come to us, apply for a loan, we'll treat you as an individual. We'll have that discussion with you around lending. And if we can um, save a whole lot of people from the scourge of buy now, pay later, payday lenders and all of that um, carry on, which continues to this day, even with all the regulations, the regulations tend to actually annoy those who are doing it properly anyway, mm. um, then, you know, we really want to have that discussion with you. And in yeah, fact, it's, it, I think it's... It's wonderful that you're bringing the person personal back into personal lending, you know, or you're basically retaining that. Yeah, know. and we've got yeah. branches that, you know, every week full of people. Yeah, and, yeah. And we've got that commitment, and we've got that commitment to small towns like Te Arapa, Narawahi and stuff. Um, you know, great, great towns where the banks have just done a runner. Mm. Um, and, you know, we've been there for years and years, and we're staying there. And you, so if you look at it from the simplicity point of view, one thing that that we really love is that, you know, I, I completely agree with you. I think if you don't mind me saying, I think there's a special place in hell for a whole lot of payday lenders and 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 you know, yeah. sort of pay it forward people, and uh, it, it's in our it's in our ethos as an organisation to want to get involved where people are getting ripped off, and there's a better way of doing it. But we're not making any money from this, just like you, right? We're 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 basically a non profit cooperative, so effectively if someone else can do it as well or better than we could do it then why wouldn't we just work with them and so i think that's really the the, the the sort of the driving force there's a whole lot of really cool things that you do that would take us years and years and years to get ready to do and all that would happen is we'd just be in competition yeah. and like what a, what a really stupid outcome that would be if ultimately we're looking after the individuals and we just say okay First Credit does this, Simplicity does that. So suddenly, as an organisation now, we have products that we can introduce to our members, which are yours, which suddenly really, you know, open up the possibility for them to be not going into the hands of not only the payday lenders and that, but just into the hands of the mainstream banks. Correct. <laughs> which are... Yeah, because the money stays here. All the profits yeah, yeah, get, yeah, yeah. get tuned back into what we do, gets tuned back into better products, better services, better IT. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and there's no one at the end of the year saying, "Where's my check? I want my share." 
Yeah, and it's, you know, and we have 200,000 members between us, so we're not small, right? Yeah, um, you know, you're saying collectively, and I think I think this is really really important is to understand that we're starting out with this as a relationship of trust. We're just trusting each other, right? And and so, but that is really anchored in our common values. You know, you can fundamentally only have a long term relationship of trust with anyone as long as you share the right values. You know, yeah. if you're driven differently, it's not going to work. And so that's cool. So we'll, we'll begin this journey. Um, and I think it's going to be a really interesting one. I, I think it's, I think that particularly with open banking, you know, I mean, who knows what, how our products will look in a common format, but, you know, with customer data rights, open banking happening, happening, I think suddenly that, that opens up a whole Pandora's box for change. Yeah. Well, let's see if the big banks um, get that moving. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, the, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, open banking started coming in seven years ago around the rest of the world. New Zealand is now is almost alone in the OECD and still dragging its its heels here. But it's going to happen. I think this, if not this government, this government has promised it by the end of the year. Who knows whether they'll be there or not? But um, the, the the next one sounds as committed. So, yeah, I mean, the, the devil will be in the detail here, but it, it is going to happen. And when over the long term, and when that happens. That means that ultimately, you know, truth and transparency win, right? You know, Always. there is yeah. there, there are so many, so many people don't move their kiwi server because they want it to be on there. Oh, I can see it on my bank app, you know. So what they don't realize is they're paying three times the fee for that convenience. When yeah. suddenly you can get your information, our information, get it together in a common format so you can see everything, then you truly, you truly have power as a consumer then. You know, you you can start buying on price and value and not buying on brand name. Yeah, and getting stuck. And getting absolutely stung. Well, you know, the finance industry is the most profitable industry in New Zealand. You know, KiwiSaver fees alone last year was $700 million for an industry that requires no capital. Yeah. Could you just, Simon, could you talk through your term deposit products as well too? Because I think that would be really interesting. Yeah, so we've got a... Um... The, the, the term deposits, we always pay more than the banks, um, generally. Um, so I think our rate at the moment for a 12-month term is 6.25. Um, and we could um, tickle that up a little bit more. Um, and obviously, you know, we rely on uh, retail deposits from our members. So... We we haven't got access to wholesale markets or uh, uh, other avenues to raise funds like the banks do. Uh, we haven't got access to the Reserve Bank at the moment like the banks do, where they get to borrow money cheaply and flog it out at horrendous rates mm. um, with a huge margin on it. So, uh, you know, we, we offer some really good um, TD terms and rates. We're always hunting money. So if anyone's yep. got any, um, you know, feel free to get in contact with us about that. Yeah, and and how safe is that? If I put a TD a term deposit with you, could you just run, run through you, how safe it is versus sticking it in the bank? Oh, I'm not entirely sure we're allowed to make comments like that, um, Sam. But um, <laughs> I mean, we're 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 uh, we've got a credit rating. We are regulated by the Reserve Bank. Um, we will. Uh, be part of the deposit compensation scheme, which comes into force next year. Um, so we will be treated just the same as banks on a um, deposit get compensation scheme. Um, we're just actually working out at the moment, and when I say working out, arguing, um, in a sense, with what that will cost us. Uh, our view is that the levy for us um, should be... Uh, just the same as a as a bank, if not lower, because we've got less of a moral hazard. Yes. Um, and of course, the bank's approach is that they should pay less because they're huge and um, and won't fail. Um, that's not necessarily always the case. So we're having those discussions at the moment, but that'll put us on an even keel um, on a compensation scheme, which is probably long overdue for New Zealand. Everyone else has had one. Um, yeah, that, I mean, the, yeah, OECD. That could be a real game changer for your industry, though, couldn't it? Because then that means that I can put a deposit with you and I can feel just as comfortable as sticking it with any bank, right? As long as it's under that deposit guarantee. It, it doesn't, it all, you know, in the sense yep. that it, it, it's safe. Your money really is yep, safe. Absolutely treated the same. 
yeah, 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 yeah. That, that that could be really huge. I mean, I think that would be, and that which, and that would allow you to grow all the other aspects of your business as well. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I think that I personally think that this moat that has separated, that's protected the banking industry, which has been in some cases one of trust. Right? They say, oh, well, I can trust the bank, but I can't trust anyone else. That's getting narrowed now. And in the term deposits, there's no moat at all. You'll no. be as safe as the banks. That's right. Yeah, yeah, that'd be fantastic. And then if it's available online and it's easy to transact and you deal with a human being and you can go into a branch and do it, all of that stuff actually becomes quite differentiating. And you're doing good at the same time because yeah. you're part of a, a um, you know, the, the virtual circle of a cooperative. So it works really well. Yeah, cool. So you've talked through personal loans, which is really a flagship lending product and then term deposits which of course help fund you and that look, looks like a very bright future there as well is there anything else you wanted to bring to our attention in terms of either products you have or ones that are coming up there that we should be paying no, attention the, to we, the other two the other two main ones um which is our flagship especially the personal lending yeah and and we want to do more personal lending because it actually cuts out a whole range of other problematic lending uh and the other day I was talking to someone from the Waikato Times about, for example, we had a loan application here where um, the person who applied had 37 buy now, pay laters that she was paying. And um, and that goes to part of, you know, in our act, we, we were under the Friendly Societies and Credit Unions Act. Um, part of what we try and do is some financial literacy. And uh, the article in the Times was actually about financial literacy. And we're appalling in New Zealand for that, absolutely appalling. And that's the sort of outcomes you get from having poor financial literacy. 37 yeah. buy now, pay later. Okay. Well, can we get to some, we've got some questions now that have come in. Do you mind if I just uh, run some of those past you, mate? Yep. So uh, does your lending include mortgages for investment property? It certainly doesn't with simplicity. We just do first home lending. What do you do? Yeah, we, we will look at that on a case-by-case -case basis. Okay, so yep. you could possibly. Okay, that's could cool. Possibly. Yep. And there's one from a Simplicity member here. I have a personal aversion to credit unions as I think they encourage people to take on debt they can't afford. Can First Credit Union speak to this? Yeah, it's simply not true. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So you Part basically... being is the financial literacy. Yeah. Um, there's no way on, on earth we're lending to people that can't afford to pay it back or... Uh, won't enter into some sort of agreement with us to get themselves uh, uh, back on a, a proper path. For example, um, if we do see uh, um, people that are wanting to borrow money and are in a bit of the crap, frankly, then what we have, what we even do now, is we put a little bit of a wraparound uh, thing around them, lend them the money they have to pay into a compulsory savings account, which we call our loan provider. And what we do then is say, look, um, we'll help you get back on track, but you've got to put, even if it's five bucks a week away, and start a savings program. And that's part of what we do. That's our reason for being. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. So um, here's another question here. Um, what benefits does this partnership provide? What's in it for your loyal members? Well, uh, exactly what there was beforehand but hopefully uh, awareness of the other products. And I think the beginning of a journey which may end up having um, more attractive products consolidated and more easy to digest form, which allows, saves you money, both in terms of higher term deposits or loans. So nothing immediately, and there hasn't been any money changing hands, and there won't be between our two organisations. We're just doing it because we're um, similarly hearted organisations that can see that we have a complementary product set available. Yeah, and, and the important thing, Sam, is there isn't money. We're not doing uh, commissions. We're not doing backhanders. And as I told, told you, Sam, after I started uh, talking to you about it, I got approached. Well, we got approached here by another provider, um, a KiwiSaver provider who wanted to, a local chap who wanted to share his commission with us. And right. from memory, I could, I could be wrong, but from memory, he was getting like 350 or 360 bucks per uh, Kiwi saver, saver that he was moving from one provider over to the one he worked for. And he was yeah. he, he, he was wanting to share that 50-50 with us here. And, you know, that, that I just found that behaviour appalling. 
and the ongoing trails and the, everything else. And by doing that, that, there's only one person paying for it, and it's the person who's got the KiwiSaver account. Yeah, no one else. Yeah. No, I hear you. I hear yeah. you. So um, I think we've got, got a couple of questions on the same topic here. So, um, and obviously, <laughs> maybe not big big fans of of me or Simplicity, but said, I thought personal loans and credit card debt were bad, Sam. Read your book. Or isn't, and also one here says, isn't First Credit Union a personal loan specialist, Sam? Didn't you tell us to avoid personal loans as bad debt? How is this different? So let me be be, be, be very, very clear on that. In an ideal world, we would have nobody needing personal loans because everyone wouldn't need it because, you know, they'd have enough money. They could all pay from cash. That would be an ideal world. And uh, I think what I said in my book was of all the debt that you could borrow, the cheapest debt was mortgage debt so that if you could afford to fall, uh, if you had to borrow money and you could put it on the mortgage, if that was cheaper, that you should do that. And I th I'm sure you'd agree with that, Simon. But yeah. there are a whole bunch of people who need to borrow personal loans they just don't have the mortgage or whatever and so if you if you need that money to i think the example you gave me last week was fix the car right if you need the money to fix the car if you need the money to consolidate all of these pay buy now pay later debts or whatever it and and you need a personal loan some people just do it is far better that you would deal with an organization like first credit than going into the hands of someone who's going to charge you a whole lot more yeah so um i don't think it's as simple as saying they're good and bad debt there's obviously there's obviously cheaper and more expensive debt, but if you need that, a personal loan, this is the way. But that car example is a real example, Sam, where someone had a uh, needed to get the car fixed for seven hundred dollars to get to work. Um, we we are able to lend the seven hundred dollars at say you know ten or eleven percent and no application fee. The other choice is to borrow the seven hundred percent somewhere else, where you'll probably pay. The least amount you'll pay is a $150 loan application fee. And we've seen some as high as $350, $400. Easy. Easy to borrow $700. Bucks. Plus the interest rate could be anywhere from 20 to 32% or something. Yeah. So our reason for being is that you remember the whole idea is you get a benefit. So you don't get charged loan application fee. So it's 700 bucks. You get to pay it off over one year, two years, three years, whatever. And the, our average interest rate, I think, at the moment is something like 12.4%. And our highest interest rate um, is 18. And, and, and I think the holdovers from some other credit unions, and I think out of all the thousands of loans, there's only two at 18%. So, um, you know, there's personal debt and there's dumb personal debt. Um, we're the good personal debt. So the reason that we're we're so happy about this is that in the circumstances where you need to have a loan, and yes, you're absolutely right, uh, a personal loan is something that that you, you would hope that no one would need, but if they need it, then absolutely it should come from someone like 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 First Credit, and that's just that's the reality of the world we live in. We can't we can't sit sit there in an ivory tower and just say don't take on debt ever, yeah. <laughs> because some people just need to. Okay, the other one was. Um, is first credit just like simplicity in terms of cutting out the profit margin completely, uh, or does it work differently with your term deposits and home loans? So effectively, it does in the sense that you pay what you can pay for term deposits, you charge your low rate for personal loans and other loans, you run the business, and then what, what do you do with any money left over? So the money left over every year goes back to the pot, so that goes straight back into capital. So we, the only way we can grow our capital was organically through a surplus. Uh, and then we um, use the income to, you know, do things like, for example, we own our own core banking platform, um, keeping up to date with all the IT, you know, the latest debit card and all of that sort of carry on. Okay. Um, in the next few months, hopefully we'll be uh, launching uh, Android um uh, Google Pay, and then next year we'll be doing Apple Pay on our um, on our products as well. So everything is ploughed back in one way or another to member benefits. No, that's very cool. That's very cool. So you, you're getting you're getting more and more what you call core bank functions, I guess. Correct. Yeah. yeah. And last year, for example, we also like your foundation works. Um, we give money away to through sponsorships and so forth. <laughs> And last year, I think it was Sarah, wasn't it? It was, we gave $50,000 to the local um, uh, food banks 
um, and they were the food banks that um, catered for around where our branches were. So um, we gave that back directly and we had a direct relationship. So we knew that that money was going straight out. There was no filtering of it anywhere else. Fantastic. Good on you. Yeah, we ended up doing the same thing too. Lots of food bank payments in the last couple yeah. of years. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's a bit sad as well. Yeah. yeah. So a question from Tim Hodge. Good to hear about the ethos alignment between FCU and Simplicity. Is this a formal memorandum of understanding to be reviewed after a certain period of time or simply an indication of friendship, i.e. cousins, not business partners? Yeah, I guess it's the latter, right? It's an indication yeah. of strategic friendship. And I think the way I think about it, um, and I guess the way Simplicity does is, it's just the first step on a journey, yeah? We don't quite know where that journey will be, but we know that we want to take that step together. We know that we want to be walking side by side there and we'll just see what happens. And yeah, we know at the time we want to invite some others along. Yeah, we may invite others along. And because, you know, the interesting thing, and this is the thing about, you know, cooperatives or or um, social enterprise or nonprofits, is that time is our friend. And nothing has to happen in a hurry. No one has to make any money. No one has to make any money in a hurry either. We just have to, let's just see how this works. But what we do know is that, there are 200,000 combined members there who could benefit from looking at each other's products and save money and, and be looked after by people whose hearts are in the right place. Yeah. Yep. So we'll see. Um, from S. Fock, there was a question here. To open a term deposit account with First Credit Union, would you accept a Kiwi Access Card and New Zealand Citizenship Certificate instead of a New Zealand Passport? A very specific question there. Are yeah, you able to answer that? I'll have to talk to my risk and compliance manager. That's a trick question. Uh -huh. um, one way or another, we'd sort it out. Yeah. One way. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so S. Fock, if you get in touch with First Credit, and they, uh, they'll they'll help you out there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. Look, I think that's it for the questions. Um, Simon, was there anything else you just wanted to say before we? Oh, sorry. Uh, sorry. One other question here. Um, who else, who else are you going to invite along? Well, we don't know. You know, uh, uh, we, we'll see. But we'll obviously have discussions if there are organisations who are out there who share our, you know, as we're moral compass and the structure and they want to get involved, uh, we'd be very open to that. Once again, time is our friend. Nothing has to happen in a hurry. Yeah. And then from Tim, how many of the six on the screen are members of both Simplicity and First Credit Union? Actually, we don't know, do we, Simon? Yeah, 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 there's a few hands there. <laughs> so we don't know. Uh, we haven't actually, and that would be a privacy issue to get those two databases to match. So we probably never will find it. Um, I've been a member of Simplicity for a long, long time. You have. Thank you very yeah. much. So my um, yeah. yeah. But but I I don't I'm not sure that there'll be a mess. Well, there might be. There might be quite a reasonable overlap because we're also a default Kiwi server provider. So we don't know, but that it sort of doesn't matter in the sense that what we want to do is just make sure that our members are aware of each other's products and we'll see how we we'll see how we go. All righty, I think that's it for questions. Oh, just one other question, a little bit more technical. What hi Sam, what do you think about the government's deal with BlackRock? Uh, couldn't we see um a uh, couldn't we recreate a superannuation corporation? Look, I think the deal with BlackRock just I won't spend too long on it. I think the deal with BlackRock was more PR than substance. So it was more show than substance. This is just another fund being launched. Didn't appear as if any money had been raised. It was no. a good, 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 good opportunity for the government and BlackRock to get on stage and get some PR. Um, I think the government may have been a little unaware of the fact. I think they got played a little, but, uh, you know, uh, for that, for their, you know, it's always good for a fund manager of the prime minister sitting up there, but, you know, We'll be launching a fund in a couple of months' time. I'm not expecting the Prime Minister to stand up and do a press conference with me about it, but Black <laughs> to do that one. So that, that that's cool. Good, good on them. Um, uh, but, you know, the idea of KiwiSaver funds investing in infrastructure in New Zealand is a really intriguing long-term long -term thing, and we're certainly uh, beginning to explore it. Um, so, you know, there's a long-term future somewhere like that. But this particular BlackRock fund, I would call it more opportunism than 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 substance but you know who knows could well be proved wrong so i think that's um that's it uh anything else simon from your team no just thank you very much for the opportunity and it's been yeah. great answering the questions yeah it's awesome thank you and this is this is the the beginning of a 
of a really what I think will be a really cool journey. So thank you very much for checking in, uh, folks. If you'd like to um, ask for any information, you can first credit union on the website. You're there. You can get hold of us at info at simplicity.kiwi and we'll yeah. we'll refer you on. And uh, yeah, look, for, we'll see, see you again soon. Thanks, Cheers. Sam. Thanks, 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 team. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.